Okay, uh, this video is going to attempt to show you how to collimate uh, Schmidt Celestron C9.25 or any other for that matter. Uh, using the method of the webcam and our laptop, craterlet software, and also the collimation crosshair. So, here I have it mounted, uh, I have the C9 mounted on the alt, type of alt azimuth mount, so I can control the left and right controls, and the telescope is pointed at a light bulb way over there by the tire, as you can see it. Or maybe you can't, but anyways, it's there. It's a little blue thing right by the tire, and that gives me a nice reflection of the sun as a star, which would look at around the magnitude 1 or 0, or even brighter. All right, so I'm pointing at that. That's got to be at least 150 feet. So that's what that's pointing at. Now let's go under the hood. We have a laptop connected to the webcam, which is a Philips. Oh, it's freezing cold out here, like minus 12. And there's the laptop, and I'm going to try to get under the blanket here to show you what I've done and how I've done it. My fingers are frozen. All right. Let's see if we can get under here. Hopefully the camera will adjust. Okay, so... I'm not sure you can see what that's called. Collimation crosshair. I'll just toss it out of the way. It's just a software that you can download so let's just toss that not that one this one toss it out of the way for now okay and what i've done is i focused on the light bulb giving me the airy disc and uh the secondary mirror and the outside of the primary mirror so what happens is you you take your hold on a second i'm blind take your collimation crosshair and bring it smack on the outside of the primary not the interior ignore the ignore that for now just put that on there if you want you can also change colors uh, you can probably go to red if you think it's easier to look to see there's the red and what we're looking for is is the reflection of the secondary way over to one side or to the other or to that was a car going by in front of my webcam or too low so if you uh, as you adjust again make sure that this is centered good like don't have it off to the side like this or don't have it up there put it as dead center as you can on the exterior so you can see if the interior this circle here is keeping the secondary in the center now there's also an option here of making more rings well, if I can show you more rings more rings, less rings, less rings, less rings. Right down, I think, to just one. So I choose the closest one that fits. Now, if that doesn't happen, grab the corner here. Let me see. Man, it's hard to do this. Grab the corner and just, you know, play with this. You can shrink it or you can make it really, really big. So put it where you want it. And now here's the nice thing about having this telescope on the um, right ascension. Uh, not a right ascension, but having it uh, Altaz, you know, I can move it because as soon as you make the adjustment the tel the primary mirror is, is not going to move, but the secondary is going to throw a light in a different section, so you're going to want to be able to to go back to this and adjust it uh, left and right and it doesn't matter if it doesn't fall right on because you're always going to yeah, I guess I already moved that one, didn't I? and then you have, of course alt azimuth so this one's up and down so make sure you're centered inside crater lit the best you can and then adjust that software to and man it's a very it's bad seeing out right now it's windy like crazy cold like crazy the telescope's been outside for a week so that's not you're not seeing cool down here you're seeing bad reflection from the sky to my light bulb. It's actually a black light. To uh, and you see there, I'm blind. And of course, remove this back to the center. Okay, I hope that really helped. 
so you need the telescope, you need the webcam, a light bulb a couple hundred feet away, or if you want to use nighttime or street light, use craterlit.exec, download it, use it. And this is called, it's French though, it's called Mir de Collimation version 0.3 GGRM. But uh, it's not bad, it's not hard to find online. And um, remember to, every movement you make on the front of your telescope, here is uh, whatever you do here is going to be affected, affected down here. So, it's, so what you do is try to put the laptop as close as you can to yourself when you're working. This way, you can just you know reach over by an inch. Now, if you want, I can just play with the focus a bit, see what that's like. I know it's bad. This seems bad, but the car went by. So you can make your airy disc smaller. See if I can let go for a second. Or you can make it bigger. Until it's crazy out of range. Depending on how, how big your how big your uh, software for uh, acquiring the images. You don't have to use Cradle. Use whatever came with it. Make sure you can run it 640 by 480 though. Because by doing that, you'll have uh, you'll have the best. All right, that's it. That's that's how it's done. I, I, you can do this on Newtonian. You can do this on a Schmidt. You can do this probably not on a refractor. I wouldn't know how, but uh, shows a really nice mission on refractors. All right, this is Mitch from Space for Warp on my YouTube channel. I hope this was helpful. Here's my ugly mug. There's all the gear. And uh, practice makes perfect. And of course, don't remember your, don't forget your 150-foot light bulb right there by the the tire. That thing's having a hard time focusing. Yeah, it's right down there. Anyways, right by the tire of that van, there's a little blue light bulb. All right, so that's it. Don't forget to comment and.